the word organic is becoming popular by the minute and some of us try to make our own products that will save us a couple of bucks but don't be so quick to try do-it-yourself cosmetics as there are dangers involved. Aesthetics and laser physician Dr. Marisha Terrilong joins us with a few tips. Hey doc, good morning. Hi, good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for joining us. It's a very important <laughs> discussion. Uh, so, so let's talk a little bit about um, do-it-yourself cosmetic because most people even now, especially now that they're home in COVID, kind of mix up a little thing here and a little thing there and putting it on our skin, eh? But, but, yes. what, but what are the dangers of doing that? Okay, well, um, just to start off, I believe very much in medical grade skincare that has gone through a lot of research and has a lot of scientific basis. So in terms of the do-it-yourself home care skincare, I mean, you don't know what, um, like your environment in terms of um, where you're doing it, um, bacteria, um, incorporating all of that into the skincare products that you're making mm -hmm. um, can be very dangerous for your skin because it can then aggravate the issues that you may be having with your skin. Yeah. Is it therefore important as a consumer because we're telling people to pivot and so a lot of people are, are now doing cosmetics at home and selling them to customers and friends. Um, is it important as a consumer to check where it's being made, yeah. who's making it, and know the background and so on? Yes, all of that is important. So I cannot stress enough for uh, my patients, clients, just consumers in general to do their due diligence research where these products are made. Are these products um, certified and tested, for example, by the Bureau of Standards? Are these products um, being looked um, throughout by the, um, the Ministry of Health at the Pharmaceutical Division? So all of these things are super important because, as I said before, um, they can cause further buildup on the skin mm -hmm. if it is that products aren't formulated properly. All right, we're going to run quickly through some lists of why this can be dangerous. Number one, the preservatives. That's the first culprit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, yes, very good. Um, aloe vera is one of the most common preservative used. Um, and I mean, aloe vera is awesome, but um, in terms of um, always using, for example, the aloe vera or other natural preservatives may not be the best option for um, your skin concern. Yeah. Um, Turmeric is excellent as well as a natural ingredient, but again, due to the formulation, it may be harsh on the skin, it may be too abrasive. Yeah. So all of these it says conventional cosmetics go through a challenge test showing how effective a preservative system is. So one of the things you probably want to do is carefully assess its smell and look like you would do for food. Um, and, yes. and, yeah, and say so this is what happens to your cream when the preservative is not fit. Yes. Our second culprit, incompatible ingredients. Yes, blending. So what you find is that you may put, for example, cinnamon or coconut together and they don't mesh well. So it, 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 it can cause a buildup of more dirt, more oils in the skin that will then cause, for example, your acne or your eczema to, you know, to flare. Mm -hmm. And you're wondering what's, why that's happening. So it's important that ingredients gel together to give you the best outcome. Yeah, and, then, and, and for the most part also, you probably want to get a kind of smell from it. From, and then when you mix the things together, you get a smell that's like, oh. Uh. Here can have their own sort of um, fragrances. Um, so it, it, it is best not to probably incorporate excessive dyes um, and other um, synthetic um, preservatives so as not to cause, again, that... Um, not to have them jelly well together. Yeah, the third culprit is very important because a, a lot of people don't understand that natural ingredients um, have pH levels and not, and not every type of skin can manage every type of pH level. So that's another important thing that you have to, to be aware of. Yes, because for example, the skin is slightly acidic. 
So, I mean, if you're going to be using something um, a bit more alkaline on your skin or a bit neutral or even too acidic, that can be an issue. So, all of these things go, go hand in hand. The, 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 the pH, the preservatives, how well the products gel together, the ingredients rather gel together to give you the best outcome again so that you're not making the conditions of your skin worse. Yeah. The fourth one is, is intriguing to me. It's, it's, it's the false friend ingredients and that's because once people hear natural they think it's just good for your full stop but 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 this says here um some ingredients are 100 percent natural for example essential oils however lots of them are skin irritants yes. and then depending on whether you're pregnant you shouldn't use them if babies sniff them they shouldn't yeah yes yeah, so a lot of um, essential oils they 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 are nose friendly <laughs> In the sense that they smell very nice, um, um, they may be calming, but again, based on um, different allergies that you may have, they can trigger that, trigger sinusitis, um, not safe in pregnancy, as you mentioned, um, can cause contact, um, dermatitis, rashes to the skin. So all of, that, all of these things, again, have to be duly considered. All right. There are four things that you should not put on your face. I'm going to tell you, I'm guilty of one of them. I won't say which. <laughs> I want to <laughs> Yeah. I, I, listen, I'm probably guilty of two of them. Um, toothpaste. You shouldn't put toothpaste on your face? Oh, my gosh. I actually can remember growing up and trying that out, you know, when you have a little pimple. But yeah. it's probably one of the worst things to ever put on the skin because... It, it, it will probably lighten that area. It, it, it can uh, definitely dry out the area too much and cause a lot of darkness that can persist for years. I've, I've, yeah, I've actually seen patients like that. Guilty as charged. <laughs> Next thing you shouldn't put on your skin is apple cider. Oh my gosh, apple cider vinegar is another common culprit. Because again of that high as um, the yeah, high acid. acid. Yeah. Yeah. So again, if you are um, like if you have very sensitive skin, eczema prone type skin, what all of it does is that it disrupts the skin's barrier. So then that will introduce bacteria into the skin and again exacerbation of your skin concerns. Worse now we're tackling masking, that's a new thing. So <laughs> I'm laughing because someone who shall remain nameless said, no, you tell me. Listen, doc, this list of four things, I'm freaking out. Number three, sugar scrub? Yes. Oh, my gosh. So sugar, I mean, I don't even remember using sugar scrub, especially like some cinnamon, etc., body scrubs. But the, 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 the surface of the beads, they are so irregular and... And again, they can cause microscopic tears in the skin. And again, that will then disrupt the barrier, introduce bacteria, just problems. So we have to be careful. Well, well this last one, I'm uh, lemon. Lemon, I figure, is a little harsh, eh? Yeah, lemon, lemon is also fairly common. Um, and then it is a great antioxidant, but it can also be very irritating to the skin. So. Um, just using lemon by itself should not, I, I believe, should not be just applied to the skin like that. Listen, all the women in Jamaica just went, oh my God, for, for those four things. They're like, oh. <laughs> all right. Um, you know, and as I said, people are pivoting, so we're not trying to stop the hustle. But what would be your recommendations to, to, to anyone who's watching this morning? And they really want to, to launch out in their, their cosmetic organic industry. What, 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 are, what is your advice? Okay, my first thought is to definitely um, get your business registered. I feel like that's super important. Mm -hmm. um, and then secondly, um, speak with the Bureau of Standards. Um, they will tell you all about how they go about conducting testing. Um, um, also speaking with um, Ministry of um, well, the division down on Dominica, they're excellent at pretty much guiding you throughout the whole process. 
to ensure too that the products are certified. So speaking with those two um, bodies would be very important in uh, getting yourself together and organizing your organic skincare. And then packaging is also super important, mm -hmm. I think. You should ensure that your natural skincare products are in dark containers, um, not really exposed to a lot of light and air, because that can also degrade the preservatives as you go, and hence allow the shelf life to be shorter. Um, yeah, and you know, and 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 I, and I would add the scientific research council as well, because they also assist a lot with um, testing and yeah. so on. Doc, thank you so much, you know. <laughs> yeah, this this was awesome. You just saved some skin. <laughs> so less acne, less eczema, honestly, would be great for um, our self-esteem and our self-confidence. So I'm happy to be of some help. All right. Thank you so much. And of course, consumers, you can check the Bureau of Standards Jamaica website just to be sure that um, whoever you're purchasing from has been cleared by them. Dr. Marisha Terrilong, aesthetics and laser physician. Awesome talking to her. Up next, healthier steps in the kitchen with food blogger, Michelle Blackwood. Soon come.